Okay. Um, when I start this song, you're to think, oh no, because this is a long song. I'm not going to do the whole song. It's got too many verses. I'll just do two. Um, I'll do the second verse in a different language, and if I choose that language wisely, you all aren't going to know if I'm doing it right or not. So... But if I mess the chords up, you do notice that. Sorry about that. All right. I actually ran a business in Poland for a couple of years, and I was singing an American song, karaoke. And a man came up and told me I spoke beautiful English. And he was right. Now, in my, in my other life, I teach three-year-old Sunday school, and I write songs to reinforce the Bible stories. And a few weeks ago, we taught them about Adam and Eve, and I wrote a song, and I, I realized pretty quickly it wasn't appropriate for three-year-olds. But <laughs> So I didn't sing it to them. Don't worry about that, but I'm going to sing it for you. <laughs> symbolic or even make-believe, but I think they really happen. This is a story about Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve, some people doubt it, but I believe that they're the source of all humanity, singing Adam, Adam and Eve. Now you've all heard the story about the snake in the garden, and lots of people say that they've even just kept that one little rule, we'd all be living in paradise, David. I have my doubts, man, I have my doubts about that. See, I figure if Eve had messed up, someone else would have, and if no one had messed up after all these years, I'd probably mess up myself, because I mess up a lot. Stuff. The next thing we read is that Eve had a son, which brings up the whole question of when was sex invented? Because <laughs> if they were having sex in the garden, then I want to know, was Adam lucky every night? Or did Eve get to take the night off anytime she wanted to with no complaints? Because it sort of hinges on your definition of paradise now, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's been bothering me. When did they learn about the birds and the bees? I'm talking about Adam, Adam and Eve. Now, a lot of you are saying, Mike, how can you drag sex into a Bible story? But I think it was always there. I mean, you had a naked man and a, a naked woman in a garden. Anyway, I know what he looks like because I saw her statue. She's in the Cincinnati Art Museum. She's carved in flawless white marble. She's about six feet tall. She has a perfect figure. Now the artist chose to carve Eve without any leaves at all, and so her natural beauty is rather apparent. And as I was admiring or even staring at this work of art, my wife said, why are you looking at that? I said, don't worry, honey. It's no problem. This is my grandma. Adam and Eve, 
as could be. Paradise had no sagging thighs or acne. She was the prettiest grandma that you ever did see. I'm singing about Adam, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve. They ate the apple and they wore those leaves. But they discovered sex for you and for me. I'm thinking Adam, Adam and Eve. 